You've been doing this now for nine years. Nine years, yeah. It's Trying to get time. computer science taught in schools. How much progress has there actually been? When we started, 10% of U.S. schools taught computer science. Now it's at 51%. So we've now tipped it. So if, if you're a parent whose school doesn't, your child's school doesn't teach computer science, you're now in the minority. But we still want to get to the point where 100% of schools teach computer science. And we're also at the point where even with all these schools teaching it, only 5% of high school students study computer science. And we want to reach every kid. Uh, so that's the, the next decade of work is to get to every single student in every school. So you've got Mark Zuckerberg, Sheryl Sandberg, Jeff Bezos, Sundar Pichai, and you know hundreds more who have signed this letter. What will this letter actually accomplish? Well, the first thing I wanted to say is it's, it's not surprising to see folks like Tim Cook or Bill yeah. Gates or Mark Zuckerberg saying that schools should teach computer science. What's truly unique is the companies outside of the tech sector, the leading companies in retail, transportation, finance, even in coffee or toys or you know, mm -hmm. Starbucks, Nike, Hasbro, these companies, Nordstrom's, UPS, Walgreens are all getting behind computer science to show that computer science is no longer about just jobs at tech companies because every company is becoming a tech company. Every company has data science needs right. or cybersecurity needs. So ha have you gotten a response from lawmakers, from the people who have the you know, capability of changing this, of adding this to a school curriculum? We've, we have early signs. The National Governors Association, all 50 governors are actually getting together tomorrow, and we expect by Thursday that they're going to make an announcement on this topic. Uh, we don't know exactly what it's going to say, but the early signs are it's going to be tremendous. I'm hoping to see all 50 governors united behind something about computer science because this is an issue really that everybody can get behind. You've shared your story with us here over the years, but I want to remind our viewers, you know, you grew up in Iran, your school didn't offer computer science, but you were still able to get access to a computer and it changed your life. If your school had offered computer science, do you think your life would have been different? Well, for me, I had a father who was mm -hmm. a physicist and a mother who was a computer scientist. So even growing up in post-revolutionary Iran during a war, I was learning to code on my own. Mm -hmm. But if you think about the most underprivileged kids in today's world, the kids who are getting left behind, what's the one thing we can teach them in school that gives them a pathway ahead? Or that even just gives them the confidence that I can build something, I can make something, I can, I can change the world, I can be a creator. Kids want to create, mm -hmm. and right now they're becoming creators on TikTok or Instagram because that's easy. If they knew that they could create apps and create software, there's a whole world of opportunity that we would open up for them as well. There's also the how. You know, what are schools getting right when they are trying to deliver this curriculum, and what are they getting wrong? I mean, I've got multiple children in school, and you know, there, there, there's there's this thirst for more computer science, and I, I even wonder if they're doing it the right way. Yeah, one of the challenges is to make sure computer science is taught creatively. So it's not just about like learn, learning these things and memorizing and passing the test, but more like what do you want to create? What app do you want to create? What game? What website? To, to basically draw out the natural creativity. And when it's taught that way, it also brings in diversity into the field because more students are interested in, in creating stuff than they are in just sort of doing rote work. So how long do you think before we get to 100%? I'm pretty confident that by the end of the decade we will because there's now multiple states saying that it's going to be required for graduation. There's now five states that require computer science for graduation from high school. And when you do that, you get to 100%. You also fix the gender gap. You fix the racial equity gap. Every student learns so computer science. So this is the, the secret to everything. Pretty much, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, in South Carolina, for example, it's the first state that required computer science for graduation. There's now more young women in South Carolina learning computer science than the five states surrounding it. Even though those five states have 10 times more young girls in school, South Carolina is beating the, the total of them combined. That's amazing. How do you think the macroeconomic conditions going into a downturn will impact all of this? Are you at all concerned that other things will take priority? Uh, I actually think this is the best time to invest in this because actually many states have surpluses that they can spend on education. Mm -hmm. And also any location that's worrying about economic downturns can bring jobs to their region. In the past, if you wanted to attract high-income high jobs, you need to attract an office to be built. In the world of remote work, all somebody needs to do is educate people and the jobs will come to the region. Whether it's a city or even a small town in a rural neighborhood can bring tech jobs, high-paying tech jobs.